be live. I should be live? It says you're live. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully everyone can hear me out there. Uh, hi, my name is Kayla Cox, for those of you who do not know me. I'm the owner of this channel. Um, I'm also the author of The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting. I've lost 80 pounds and kept it off uh, with intermittent fasting, mostly OMAD during that time, which just means one meal a day, which is really just as simple as it sounds. Uh, I am not keto. I'm not even low carb. I don't count calories. I don't limit carbs at all. Um, there are no forbidden foods with me. Uh, and I'm also the founder of the Slow and Steady Success Academy, which is uh, an academy of online courses that teach you how to lose weight and keep it off. Uh, I have one about intermittent fasting, weight tracking, all sorts of stuff. Um, and I also have a private Facebook group uh, for the All Access Pass members who uh, are, you know, it's like basically a subscription to the academy. And uh, in there, I do uh, a weekly live group coaching style session. And I am also there to just answer questions that you have along the way. So if you need more support in your weight loss journey, that's a great place to check out. So, uh, and my husband, Jay, is in the uh, chat section as Six Miles to Supper. So if you see somebody typing, that's who that is. Thank you, Jay, uh, for uh, moderating comments. You're so, <laughs> uh, so let's get into some questions. Uh, first off, we have from the YouTube community tab, Proud Mama, who asked, um, I'm newer at this. I'm one month in. If I want to change my fasting hours, let's say on the weekends, to incorporate breakfast with family, how do I go about that? Because at one point, my fasting hours will be much fewer. Uh, just a bit confused. Well, that is a good question because I think a lot of people kind of struggle with that. It was something I struggled with a lot in the beginning. Like I would, I was trying to figure out like, how do I do this? Because we had the same exact thing happening on Sunday mornings. Uh, I would be doing fine with fasting all week long. Sunday morning would come along. My husband would make from scratch uh, chocolate chip pancakes. And, and it was like this family event for us. And so I would like try to, you know, eat that then and then like try to fast for the rest of the day. It just didn't work for me. So I decided to take Sundays completely off. I call it my cheat day, but it is completely the day off. Um, and that's what helped me because um, what I found was I, I didn't even worry about it. I just said, okay, I'm going to keep uh, Monday through Saturday fasting, like, you know, uh, at one point I was doing OMAD at other points I had, you know, a fasting window, but then Sunday was just my day off. So I didn't uh, do any kind of calculations. So like Sunday starting at midnight <laughs> would be the uh, beginning of the cheat day. And it would go, in my case, I, I said all the way till midnight like, or well, 11.59 PM on Sunday. So I never recalculated based on those things. What I did just for my own sanity's sake, just to try to make it easier on myself, uh, when I was doing like, say, a 16, 8, um, or let's, let's say 18, 6 to make it easier on myself, uh, I, I would say I'm just uh, on those days that I'm fasting, I eat from the hour uh, in between the hours of 2 and 8 p.m. OK, so I'm not doing calculations in my head trying to figure out, well, wait, I ate at 8 p.m. last night and I just didn't worry about it. Um, and keeping it simple like that, I think helped me be more consistent because I just didn't have to overthink it. I wasn't having to like stress out about it all the time. And I don't think you have to either. Um, and so uh, I would say play with it a little bit. Like if you're wanting to take, uh, say, both days on the weekends off, because some people do that. Um, or if you just want to have like a shorter fasting window, just experiment with it and see what works for you. There's no like one right way to do this. There's lots of really good ways to do it. So, um, okay, Jesse L., said, uh, do you find your pedometer accurate? Uh, sometimes it seems like mine is just counting all my arm movements. Okay, so that's a great question. You didn't mention uh, which pedometer you have. I have an Ulta, uh, Fitbit Ulta, um, and I love it. I, uh, I've had it. it. This one has actually lasted me for a while now. Now I can't remember when I bought it, but um, it, I think the quality has gone up a little bit on Fitbits. Uh, my original Fitbit was like a flex and it only lasts a little bit longer than a year. Um, this one, I've just, I, I feel like it's holding up better. Um, as far as it being accurate, I, I think it is really accurate. Although I will say, I'm sure that it does sometimes count, you know, uh, our movements. I've never worried about it. In my opinion, it's like, I'm just going to, you know, like live my life and I'm not going to worry if occasionally it counts my arm movements or whatever. Now, my husband has a Charge HR 
and so it's a little bit older. And if he is driving in our RV, so it's a classy RV. And so, you know, if you're going down a bumpy road, it's, or even, even a regular road, there's a lot of bumps and the steering wheel is kind of loose and he can get a lot of steps uh, just by wearing it while he's driving. So you do have to be kind of careful in those kinds of extreme situations where you maybe have a lot of arm movement. But I found it pretty um, uh, accurate overall. Like, so for example, like if I get my steps in and like, I just don't really, uh, you know, get up for the rest of the day, which does happen occasionally, um, depending on what time, you know, I, I get done with my steps. It, it's not like I have a bunch of steps after that, you know, it's just like, it's, it seems really accurate to me. Um, I will say this also, uh, I found out recently uh, that Fitbit, uh, in particular, like if you're running, your distance will be different. Uh, so your distance will be different whether you walk or run. So for example, for walking for me to get six miles ish uh, is about 14,000 steps. So that's just always been my goal. Recently, I started running uh, uh, my six miles and that's usually around 12,000 or so. So the steps are different because your stride, I guess, is longer when you're running. I think that's the way they calculate it. But just be aware that depending on your movements, you may find some, you know, discrep discrepancy there. Um, let's see. Tina uh, Merchadani. I really enjoy your videos. Well, thanks. Uh, I've been trying fasting for the past few months, pushing it out longer and longer. My question is, uh, do you think anything like tea or coffee in the morning? Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Is Do you drink anything uh, like tea or coffee in the morning or just wait until your first meal? I can push until uh, about 12 p.m. for the first meal if I have a coffee first thing. Uh, my last meal is always by 6 p.m. So, yeah, I've always allowed myself coffee always coffee <laughs> in my fasting window. I started out actually having cream and sugar in my coffee. I cut out uh, the sugar because I wanted to train myself to like unsweetened beverages. Like I wanted to be able to have coffee that just had cream, no sugar. Uh, I wanted to be able to drink as much like unsweetened tea as I wanted during the fasting window. Uh, I have these things like um, uh, LaCroix or this is a clear American, but it's flavored unsweetened sparkling water. So it's got like some essences of like, I don't know, this one's lime, but um, uh, it doesn't have any sweetener at all. So not even artificial sweeteners. And I was able to train myself to like that. Now I love, 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 love like LaCroix and all those things. And I really dislike the taste of really, really sweet beverages. Now, um, I, I just don't, I, I had a, a a uh, sip of uh, some Mountain Dew the other day because I always just like to test it every now and again like hey do I like it you know like will I enjoy it I didn't really enjoy it I do love sweet foods still like I love you know cake and and that kind of thing but uh sweet beverages just don't do it for me um uh so yeah so I have always allowed myself not everybody who talks about intermittent fasting is going to agree with me on that point but I lost 80 pounds and kept it off doing that so um so that's what I say. And a lot of people allow themselves that too, with no, no bad results. Um, Heather Von Berg says, hi, Kayla, love your channel. Well, thanks. Uh, I'm so thankful to God that I found your information. It's really helping me. Um, I wanted to ask if you could make your seven day average spreadsheet available on, for Google Drive or Google Shoot, Sheets. I can't seem to get it uh, to open there. Okay, so I did have it at one point. Uh, and you might have like an old link or something. I, at one point I had it in my Google drive, but what was happening there was it was difficult because in order to like get your own copy, it, it's kind of a process and people were getting really confused. And so I just made it available as a straight up download on my website. So Jay will put the link to that. Um, if you have any trouble though, getting it from there, please let me know. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get with you later. Um, you can send me an email at Kayla at six miles of supper .com. Uh, Okay. So, uh, but thanks for that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the spreadsheet. Uh, Beverly Shiarla says, uh, hi, I, I stopped fasting to just eat when I'm really hungry, but I started to gain weight because I had a hard time stopping eating. So I went back to fasting. I feel so much better and more disciplined. I do count calories though, because I get concerned. I'm not going to eat enough and I'm going to be hungry for the next day or, or, uh, I'm going to eat too many. So I'm not really sure what the question is in there. I, maybe you're at, kind of asking, uh, 
it, it's like you're you're having trouble with this whole idea of uh, when you once you are in your eating window, it's kind of hard to stop. Um, and that is something a lot of people struggle with. I think um, uh, that kind of snacking, you know, it's like once you kind of sit down and eat and then you just keep picking and all that. Um, some people have found it helpful to just say no, no snacking, just like I will sit down for meals and, uh, and that's it. Um, I would recommend if, if you find yourself snacking a lot, and this is true for me. So, it, and it, and some people are just different, but this was true for me. Snacking was more about emotional eating than it was actually being hungry. And, um, so I would just, you know, explore that the next time you're kind of like having trouble stopping or, or like maybe you ate and then you're just feeling hungry again. Um, explore whether you're actually hungry or maybe something's stressing you out or you're upset about something. Um, and then also make sure you're eating plenty at your first meal. Like when your window opens, I, that was one habit I always had was when my window opened, I sat down and ate. Like I wanted to, to eat to the point of satisfaction and then, you know, if later on I needed that snack, I would take it. But usually what I found just in general was I would eat a pretty, you know, substantial something uh, to open the window and that would keep me full until supper. And then I would eat, you know, again until I was full. And then usually I'd have a small little something right before my window closed just because I wanted to make fasting the next day as easy as possible. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question. Uh, Jan Sanner said, uh, hi, Kayla, love your channel. Well, thanks. Um, it helped me to find a sustainable path uh, or plan, which really works. Uh, very good. I'm doing OMAD six days a week, drink up to three cappuccinos a day, cheat day every Sunday, and a 20-minute home workout video every day. Sounds very similar to what I did, so that's great. Uh, my question is, how do you handle seasoning food for your family while cooking lunch, dinner, do you taste while cooking or adjust the seasoning or do you avoid tasting as much as possible during your uh, fasting window? Being an all or nothing personality type, I'm scared uh, that tasting a spoonful of the lunch I'm cooking might trigger a bigger lapse in my otherwise consistent fast. Uh, huh, that is such a good question. And um, so nowadays I feel like I can do that. No problem. Like it just like take a bite. And, and it doesn't trigger anything. Uh, in the in the beginning, I was much more strict with it because because I had that same kind of mentality of all or nothing, and uh, and and I wanted to be really clear with myself, like you don't eat right now, <laughs> like you do not eat. Um, and so, over time, though, as I got better at fasting and just saying like, uh, you know, I can taste this food if need be, um, it doesn't come up a whole lot. I'm trying to like, normally, normally now, like when I start to cook supper, it's like right before we're going to eat. So it, it's like, if I were to, to, to taste and I do like, if it, if it's something that needs tasting, I will taste it. And I just like, I just don't even like think about that as being uh bad or anything like that. Um, I would say just observe yourself and, and um, if it's a dish, you know, and you just say, okay, I will taste this, you know, to, to adjust the seasoning. And then I will observe myself to see, can I stop? And if you find that you cannot stop, then perhaps for a bit longer, just have a rule in place. Like, okay, I just don't taste the food, you know, get somebody else to taste it or something like that. And then uh, as you get more practice with intermittent fasting, then you can go back and say, okay, I think now I can handle it. Um, so but I think you will find that eventually you can just, you know, taste the food and it won't lead to anything else. Um, uh, but yeah, I definitely had the all or nothing mind mindset um, for a very long time. I find, finally, I think getting really good at not having that, but occasionally it creeps back in sometimes. So thanks for the question. Um, Becoming Diva for me said, uh, love your channel and your, uh, your book. Well, thanks for buying my book. I appreciate that. Uh, how can I concur the fear, uh, uh, oh, sorry, conquer the fear of not eating enough. Currently doing a five hour eating window. I eat between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. and do great until about 9 p.m. And then I freak out and eat. Okay, so any advice? So a couple of different things. The fear of not eating enough. So if you're afraid that you're not eating enough, and, and I think that is a common fear of uh, 
we have this crazy mentality of like, oh, I got to eat every like couple of hours or I'm just going to like starve to death and die. You know, like we, cause we've had it rammed in our heads. Like if you don't eat every, you know, couple of hours, your metabolism is going to slow down and, and you're going to, you know, gain all this weight and it's going to be impossible to lose. And uh, so it's difficult, I think in the beginning to, to just trust that you're going to be fine, <laughs> that you're going to eat enough. Like uh, what helped me to, was to really get satisfied at my meals or, you know, like if, if I was doing, you know, say, oh man, um, because I think that's where that fear kind of came in to play more for me uh, because it's just like one meal. And then you kind of think, oh, you know, but the way I looked at it is, okay, well, what would that look like? What it would look like, in my opinion, is if I'm not eating enough, my energy is going to be really low. I'm going to be feeling really bad. And, uh, you know, I'll probably be losing weight way too quickly, like say five, 10 pounds a week, right? That, that In my mind, that's kind of like what I saw as being not eating enough, like getting to a malnourished kind of level really quickly. Uh, and that just didn't happen. You know, my weight was coming off at about a pound a week, sometimes less, depending on where you're talking about my weight loss journey. Um, and, and just learning to trust it and learning to say, you know, I'm going to be fine looking at other people who have done this helped me a lot to say, okay, like for example, uh, general Stanley McChrystal, uh, he, uh, four star general, uh, he was like the commanding general in, in uh, Iraq for a while or the joint joint forces. I kind of memorize what he did exactly. But anyway, the point is he is a really fit guy. He runs uh, seven, six or seven miles a day and he eats OMAD and he's been doing that for, a decade or longer. Um, and he's fine. Like he is really fit. And so I just kind of kept that in the back of my head, like, Hey, if he's doing that, then I don't really think I have anything to worry about. Um, and I've, I, and I felt so great too. Like I feel really good eating uh, one meal a day. Um, and, and just paying really close attention to how I was feeling, the energy levels I was having. And then my results, you know, my results didn't worry me because it was like, okay, it's coming off, but it's not real fast. So um, so hopefully that can help you, uh, just, it, it's kind of like, you just kind of have to push past fear and, and also learning the difference, but, and this is tricky, but learning the difference between your gut instinct and fear, because those are two different things. Like you, you, I, I do believe we have, you know, some inborn, you know, like fear that is a good thing. Like if you see a grizzly bear, you know, <laughs> obviously it's good to be a little afraid, but, um, in general, like figuring out, am I, is, is there any real basis to this fear or am I just kind of freaking out, you know, for no, for no real good reason. Um, and then certainly, you know, like once I did like a five day fast, then OMAD was like, seemed very, very easy and, and, uh, not, you know, like extreme or anything like that. And so, um, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, okay, so this one came in uh, via email. Um, if you guys would like to get my Monday motivation email, that's uh, every Monday I send out an email. I try to include some sort of, you know, something that motivates me, uh, something that I learned along, my, along the way that helped me stay motivated on my weight loss journey. Uh, you can sign up at the link that Jay will put in the chat. Uh, and, um, and if you do sign up, I hope you enjoy it. So, uh, this person asked, uh, and if you do, if you ever email me a question, um, from, from that, uh, I always keep it anonymous and I answer it on here. So, uh, I noticed that you walk six miles for six days. Is this your personal thing? Do you think that it would have made a difference in your weight loss journey in the past if you would have stopped walking six miles a day? So actually I work, I, I, I walk, uh, six miles, seven days a week. Um, I played a little bit with that, like in my maintenance time in, um, 2017, but, um, in 2016, when I was losing the bulk of my weight, it was seven days a week, six miles a day. And, um, uh, and now, now I do six miles. Uh, I've been doing for the past 10 days, I've been running a 10 K every day. And, uh, and that's been, you know, just a recent change that I've made, um, and so, but did it make a difference in the weight loss? So I think 
yes to no. Like I, the, the, the calorie burn, yes, there's calorie burn there. It's a lot of walking, um, but it also increases your appetite. The good part about walking to me, a couple of different things. One is just being up and moving around psychologically, I think helped me to, to, to not feel sedentary anymore. I mean, like literally I wasn't sedentary anymore, but it had, it had really bugged me when I, when I started to realize how sedentary I had become uh, as an adult. Uh, I felt like that was not a good example to be setting for my kids. And, um, and it, it was just shocking sometimes to look at my Fitbit after I got it. And I thought, wow, I mean, I just, I did not realize how, how inactive I had become. Um, but the, so even though maybe it, a possibility is it increased my appetite, right? Uh, and so then therefore I ate more calories. Now it could be that, you know, it didn't really increase my appetite and I burned more calories. Who's to say? I, I can tell you a lot of people, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people and a lot of people have done no exercise at all, have just done intermittent fasting and have lost a lot of weight. So uh, I, I I always temper my, my experiences knowing that, that, okay, even though I did it this way, other people have done it a different way and still had good results. But another really good thing that the, the walking did for me was to get me in a, a good mood and, and, and it helped me get my thoughts in order. It helped me to think about a lot of stuff that I needed to think about, I think. Um, and so it's quite possible had I not been walking, uh, maybe I wouldn't have been as consistent with my fasting because maybe my mental uh, health wouldn't have been quite as good. And a another thing is the steps helped keep me busy during the fasting window because I needed like, hey, I got to get those steps in and I really would rather do them now when I need to be staying busy as opposed to later after I've eaten, you know, tonight um, at late at night. Like I don't want to be walking around the living room and get my steps in. Um, so so, so, so yes, I think they did help, but maybe not for the reasons that people might attribute them to. So, okay. Uh, so this one comes from Instagram. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is Kayla M. Cox, M as in Marie. Uh, Anonymous asked, how do I start a journal? What are the benefits of it? And what do I write in there? Um, so first of all, that was the podcast topic, um, this past week on my podcast. Um, and, uh, it was all about journaling, uh, and I've done several different kinds of journaling and I have found it so helpful, so helpful, uh, writing things, just writing things down, um, uh, in 2014, let's see, 2014. I think, yeah, 2014, uh, I read uh, Tony Robbins' book, uh, Awaken the Giant Within. That was the first book where I actually did the exercises. Like when he would say, think about this and write it down, I would write it down. And um, uh, that that kind of set it in motion for me. Like, okay, I, I can actually understand myself better when I write things down. Um, and so, uh, but I didn't really journal consistently. I, I would write things down sometimes, you know, like uh, if I if I was struggling with something. And I, what I found, though, is generally speaking, the more I've gotten into that habit, the more helpful I find it to get just get my thoughts in order and help me to think more clearly. Um, how do you start? Uh, if you're completely new to journaling, I would recommend the five minute journal. Um, it is just great. It, it's so it can be so overwhelming. And, and I was certainly the type that wanted to do it right. You know, like I want to do this, you know, this journaling thing, right. So what do I do? So, uh, the five minute journal, I think is great for beginners because it gives you a template and it's, uh, it, they give you a quote. And I, I mean, I just do my own little version of it. I, I just write down a quote that I find. Um, but if you buy the actual journal, it will have it there for you, but it, it starts out with an inspirational quote. Then it, uh, asks you to list, uh, three things you're grateful for which I find to be very helpful, starting your day off in a grateful place, like focusing on the good things that you really are grateful for. Uh, and then uh, ways to make today great. So I, I do remember at one point, like the, the things that I would write down would be like, uh, get my steps in. <laughs> like that, that was like, I was so focused on that. Like I, I want to make sure I'm doing this. And so I would just write that down as one of the things that would make today great. Um, but it's a great way to set little goals for the day, right? And and it doesn't have to be something like work related. A, a lot of times, one of mine is spend time 
uh, with my kids and with Jay. And, and it's just because that would make today great. And, and, and having that reminder is helpful. Uh, then you write down your affirmations, which I used to despise the idea of, but have really, uh, uh, learned to love and, uh, find really helpful now. Um, and then at the end of the day, so that just is the, th that's what you do in the morning. And then the evening you come back and you write down three amazing things that happened that day, which there's always three things. You can always find three things, which makes a really crappy feeling day so much better if you just sit down and, and just look for those. Because there's always some moments, even in the crappiest of days. Um, and then uh, and then the last question is, uh, how could I have made today even better? Which I think is a great exercise. That's been very helpful to me, too. Like, looking back on the day, seeing, like, what was that thing that I could have done better or, you know, what, what's that thing that's bugging me? Cause sometimes there will be a pattern and then it's really helpful. Cause it's like, Oh, this keeps coming up is the thing that I could do to make, you know, today better. So I'm going to try to get in the habit of that. Um, like being more patient, uh, with my youngest child was a thing that just popped in my head. Like a while back, I noticed like every night I'm writing, <laughs> you know, be more patient with Elijah. And, but eventually I did, I did, I said, okay, I just gotta work on that. And I did. And it's, it was really helpful. Um, and uh, so that's what I do. Now, um, another way to journal, I, I've, I've been doing this for the past 430 something days, I think, maybe, maybe longer than that. Uh, I've numbered the pages, it's 400 and something, but um, morning pages. I learned about this in The Artist Way, which is oh, a fantastic book. If you're a creative person, or even if you don't think you're a creative person, I love that book. Um, but morning pages. Uh, it's three page, three pages, longhand stream of consciousness. And I do this first thing in the morning. I wake up, read the Bible, uh, do my uh, five minute journal. Then I do my morning pages and you just write. You don't worry about spelling, grammar, capitalization, punctuation. You just write down everything, just everything. And some major things came out for me as soon as I started writing it down, like Things that I didn't even realize uh, that I wanted out of life that, that were like bugging me that we weren't doing certain things. And it just like it started coming out on paper. And um, and that was really helpful. And and it helped me to also get my thoughts in better order. When I first started doing those, uh, the best way I can describe it is like my mind felt like a freight train. Like it was just like the thoughts were just going through it so fast. And it was hard to, to like stay on a thread, if that makes sense. Um, and now when I go to do my morning pages, my mind is just calmer and I can stay with a thought and I can think things through better. So I've, I've found them very helpful. Um, one thing that I would say not to do is don't make your journal just like, here's what I did today. Cause that can be really boring and it can feel really pointless. Uh, but having some sort of reflection in it, there's lots of good journals out there, but th those are the ones that I have, uh, experience with. So hopefully that helps you. Okay. Um, Bernie Bubble X said, uh, I'm a newbie. What's the least and most uh, fast times and how many days a week do you, how many days a week do you recommend? Well, I like six days a week uh, just because for me, that's what works. I like having one day completely off from fasting. Um, it's that's enough for me. I, I don't, I don't feel the need for more than that. Um, you know, some people start out with a really, this is how I did it. I started out with a really short uh, fasting window, like eight hours long. It's barely a fasting window. Um, but it was just to start to put a time boundary around food to say, okay, I'm not going to eat between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. And then I pushed breakfast out a little bit later and a little bit later, and I was really gradual with it. Now what I do is basically a 24-hour fast is OMAD, you know, so it's like from 6.30, uh, you know, I'll start eating and I'll probably be done in about 30 minutes at most. And then I don't eat again until about 6.30 the next day. So it's like 23 hours and a half maybe. Um, but you can do it however you want to do it. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a, a set. Like a lot of people talk about 16, 8, 18, 6, but it could be like a 22, 2. You know, there, it, it's really whatever you want it to be. Um, some people go even longer than a 24 hour fast. I don't, not on a regular basis. Um, it doesn't fit well with my life. Um, but just, I would say start out slow and focus on just 
learning the skill of fasting as opposed to being so concerned with losing weight right off the bat, if that makes sense. Uh, taking down fat with C-Dub, uh, which is Chris Wyatt, he did an interview, um, which Jay will link uh, to that video in case you've not seen it. We have very similar philosophies. Uh, he asked, I'm sure you have uh, changed over your journey. What's the biggest change uh, in like personality, believing in yourself, time management, more energy or something different? Oh man, um, it's a really good question. I think the biggest change is, but because of like the experimental mindset, it it helped me to learn how to change so much in my life and to believe that I could change it. Like for so long, we, uh, me and Jay both uh, would would think like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to one day, you know be able to just travel around the world or, or, or travel full time and all this stuff. And it, it, it seems so far away, like untouchable, you know? Um, but now like, because I learned like, oh, well, you know, you can create your own weight loss plan. Like if, if nothing is like working exactly right for you, you can just make one up. Um, that kind of thing then set me off on this journey of like, oh, well, like it really is true. Like you can really, you know, make your life how you want it to be. And, and taking control, I think that's the biggest thing, like learn, that I've learned how to take complete responsibility for my life and, and therefore like every aspect of my life, I'm constantly trying to like learn, like, what do I like? What do I not like? And, and change it. If I don't like it or resent it, I change it. And uh, that is not something I felt uh, confident doing beforehand. Uh, I was very, very much like, oh, I gotta, I gotta keep this Thing and, and do this thing. And, uh, you know, so it, it has really changed me in a lot of ways, it, but it's also given me better time management, more energy, more productivity. Uh, but yeah, the believing in yourself and changing, like having that, um, I think they call it like a internal locus of control like that. <laughs> so, uh, Mona, uh, Gopal said, I've, uh, done some fasting for my religion for many years. I have also done intermittent fasting where I stop eating, uh, after my dinner until my breakfast the next day. Now I'm trying to push that window uh, out further till lunch or dinner, depending on the day. But what I cannot do is give up my coffee with cream and sugar in the morning. It is uh, It is what I live for. Will you still lose weight uh, if I'm fasting? Uh, sorry, will I still lose weight if I'm fasting from dinner onwards, having my normal coffee, and then eating from 12 to 6 or just OMAD? Now, I say go for it. I say try it at least. I'd say give it six weeks. Like do that exact plan for six weeks and see uh, what your results are. I have a feeling you will lose weight. Um, and, and, and that's really, that was my mindset uh, when, when I was trying to figure out like, cause a lot of people are like, oh no, you can't have any cream in your coffee or whatever. But I really wanted cream in my coffee. Like I didn't want black coffee or I didn't want to cut out coffee. Like I, I thought, no, for the long term, here's what I want. I want cream in my coffee. And I found that I could do that. Um, so just don't like, what can happen is you can psych yourself out and you can like get in a hurry and think, oh, people are saying I can't do this. So, but I would say, give it six weeks, see what happens, track your results and see what happens. Uh, Peter uh, Bingston, uh, 79, said, I'm trying out a 5-2 in combination with intermittent fasting. On fasting days, I take 1,000 calorie smoothie, uh, nothing more. On eating days, I have a 3-8 to eight hour eating window. This seems to work really well. Have you experimented with 5-2? Also, I make sure there's at least a 16-hour fast before my eating window. So, okay, I've not done 5-2. 5-2 is interesting to me. Um, for a, a couple of different reasons, it just doesn't work with my life where I'm at right now. Um, I'm, you know, I have kids and one thing I really wanted to do, I wanted to have the ability to just eat with them at supper. Like I didn't want to have to cook special foods and all that stuff. I just wanted to eat my meal with my family. Um, and so the five, two thing, cause you, so basically on a five, two, my understanding is you have five days of just eating normally. And then two days where you have very, very low calorie days, or sometimes people will like fast completely. But uh, generally I think it's like maybe five or 600 calories. But first of all, if it's working, I say, fantastic, do what works for you. But just for me personally, I didn't want to have to 
do that, like to restrict that one meal, like to eat less than I really wanted to eat. Um, it just, it wasn't something that really, uh, seemed like it was going to be like a long-term good thing for, for my situation. Um, but that's just because I think I have kids now, if it was just me and Jay, then maybe I would do something like that. But, uh, uh, that's, that's why I haven't toy car. Uh, sorry. Tori Carr said, uh, do you think doing intermittent fasting has been why you lost the weight or the walking or a combination of both? So I, I basically, uh, uh, answered this earlier. Um, I will also say, just speaking anecdotally, um, so many people, I, I, like when I would tell them, oh yeah, well, I walk six miles a day and I, I, and I eat, you know, once a day, the thing that they would be, uh, fixated on a lot of times was walking. And they would say like, oh, well, you know, I've been walking, you know, however many steps every day and I'm not losing anything. Um, and I do think it's ultimately you can't outrun your fork. Like yeah, you, you have to change the eating to really see results. I think for most people, because I really do think, um, that your appetite will increase with your, with your energy, uh, expenditure. And, and it's just kind of, I, I'm trying to think of any, anybody that I know of personally who only exercised and that was the only thing that they changed. And I can't think of anybody, but I mean, that's not to say that it wouldn't, uh, but I just think, in general, it's the eating side of the equation that has to change for most people. Uh, if I if I could only change one, that's the one I would change. In other words, uh, Schnauzer Millie said, "How long before I see results?" Well, that's a great question, and um, it depends. It depends on uh, one, your own body. Some people, it's like they change one little thing and they start dropping weight. That is not me, by the way. Like, I, I think I'm what is called, I don't know, a slow loser. Uh, it's hard for me to lose weight, I think, compared to some people. Some people, it just kind of flies off. Um, but I would say focus on what you can handle consistently over a year or more. Like, in your mind, if you can't already say, like, I, I can see me doing this for, like, a year it's probably not a good plan. Like start out slower, start out easier, have something that you can stick with over the long haul. Um, and you know, most people find that if they get to like a 16, eight, sometimes they need to go to an 18, six, but most people, if, it, if, if they're doing like a 16, eight, um, and they've done that for like six weeks consistently, they'll, they'll start to notice results. Um, what I've seen from my own, uh, history is kind of the same thing. Like, uh, because my weight fluctuates so much daily weight, uh, fluctuates by a lot for, for me. And plus, uh, your cycle, if you're a female, uh, plays in, uh, to that as well. Like usually, um, you know, your period week, you're going to have water weight. And so that can kind of like mess you all up because you're thinking, oh no, I've gained weight. And now, you know, the plan isn't working, but really if you, if you average your weight, so a seven day average over time, uh, and, and track that for like six weeks and see where you're at and see how your weight is trending. I think that is the best way to know if you're actually having results. Uh, what a lot of people do is they're like, they're weighing like once a week and then they're changing stuff around because like that, that one week they lost nothing or maybe they gained a pound. But if you instead, I think if you just weigh every day and track that uh, average, the average over time, that was the game changer for me. So um, there we go. Uh, but be patient. Ultimately, patience over time. It takes a lot longer than what you might think. And what rate of loss? If you are currently... Uh, like near a normal BMI, it's probably going to be like a fraction of a pound a week on average. That's just seems to be what I've noticed based on my own. Like when I was doing uh, this past time, when I was losing weight, uh, uh, I was in like the normal BMI, it was a third of a pound a week. So it was really, really slow. It would have seemed like I wasn't losing any had I not been looking at the big picture over time. Um, okay. Dale Marie 217 said, do you eat whatever you want at your OMAD or do you limit yourself? I eat whatever I want. I love that. That's, that's to me, that was the best part about all of this is like, I have no forbidden foods. I eat what I want. I eat what I like. 
Um, and that's been sustainable for me for years now. And that has never been something that I've been able to do on any other kind of diet plan. I always go back to eating, <laughs> always go back to eating the foods that I really do love. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I don't have any forbidden foods. If I want dessert, I will eat it. I don't want dessert that often though. That is a weird thing that happened, uh, when I started just allowing everything and saying, uh, I can have it whenever I want it. It's just, it became less of a thing. Uh, and whereas before when I was trying to limit it, it was like, oh, you, you know, like I want that chocolate cake. And now it's like, eh, you know, I'll have some, but it's not something I crave. Uh, and then Dale Marie 217 had another question. Uh, any chance you would consider doing a what I ate in a day for when you were doing a 16, eight. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> Everybody wants like exact things because they, here, but here's why that won't be that helpful in my opinion. Everyone's different. Everyone's metabolism is different. Mine might be a lot slower or a lot faster than, than yours. And, uh, I, for, uh, I, I did do one video a long time ago, um, called like, um, intermittent fasting meal plan. And in the video I said, there is no meal plan. And that's what I love about intermittent fasting. But I did on the blog post for that video, I listed out to the best of my recollection, what I ate for a week. Uh, and now that included a cheat day. And that was when I was doing OMAD though. Um, and I don't do that very often. I really, it's pretty rare that I put pictures of my food on Facebook or sorry, Instagram. Um, and the reason is I, people have so many beliefs about what, you know, what you should eat, what you should not eat. I, I just find it not that productive to tell people what I'm eating. Um, and again, it might not work for you. You may not do well eating the types of stuff that I'm eating. I found I don't do great if I just have a lot of carbs, like no fat, no protein. Like I don't do well uh, with that kind of thing. But learning that about myself was important. And I believe it really is important for each person to experiment with all the food and just say, how do I feel after I eat a big stack of pancakes <laughs> with syrup and no butter and just and, and try that out for a while? You know, like, how are you feeling? Uh, and focusing on that as opposed to, oh, well, so and so she ate this. And then, you know, like, why can't I eat that? Like, focus on what works for you. Um, based on the what I wrote down on on those OMAD meals, um, that could kind of give you a, an idea of how much food I like to eat uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, obviously, probably it was similar as far as like how much I was eating. It just kind of split that into two meals. And, and generally that was what was happening for me at a 16, eight, I would have two, uh, what I'd call like fair sized meal or probably good, good sized meals. I don't know. Like I like bigger portions. That's why I don't do well. I think on, on like those smaller, you know, like, oh, eat five to six small meals a day. I never feel full. And then it just causes me to eat all day. Um, so I would say mo most days, and this is why it's difficult. Most days when I was doing a 16, eight, I would eat leftovers for lunch. <laughs> and then, and then so like a, you know, a plate of leftovers. And then at supper, I would have the new food we were eating that night. Uh, but again, no foods are off limits. I would eat uh, like just like a normal American family eats, you know, spaghetti, usually one night out of the week, tacos another night, uh, uh, beef stroganoff, you know, like I just, it, it's never, um, and, and that has evolved over the years. Ooh, man, pleasing chicken, <laughs> uh, and like roasted broccoli, just, you know, lots of different meals. Um, uh, that is, I think the best thing about intermittent fasting though, that you don't have to have a set of rules about what you can eat, just eat until you're full. And that, and that's always been my rule is like, just eat until you're full and then stop eating, <laughs> you know, that, and that's it. Um, let's see, uh, Debbie Mistretta in the live chat asked how long into intermittent fasting did you start to see results? So when I got really consistent, that's when I saw the best results in, um, because I learned about intermittent fasting at the end of 2014. So in 2015, I was experimenting with it, but I just kept quitting. I was in such a rush and I was losing when I was being consistent. I was losing about a pound a week 
And I, I thought that was failure. I thought, oh, that's horrible. That's that's not that's not successful weight loss. So I would quit. I would say, oh, intermittent fasting doesn't work. So I quit that. And then I go count calories or I, you know, do this other thing. And um, so it wasn't consistent in 2015. Now in 2016, that's when I got really consistent with my plan. And at that point, my weight started to go down about a pound a week on average consistently. Now that doesn't mean that every week the pound, the, a pound came off. It just meant like some weeks it might be two pounds and then it might be a week or two before I lost any more and just kind of get stuck. And then sometimes it would uh, stay stuck for like six weeks or so. And then it would start to move down again. But on average, if you look over the course of the year, it was about a pound a week. Uh, Missy Mist said, I'm a month into intermittent fasting. I've lost 10.8 pounds. That's fantastic, by the way. Uh, I'm on a 16.8. I cheat on Saturdays and Sundays. Fantastic. Uh, while my scale is slowly ticking, I'm not looking any different. Any suggestions to speed things up? Don't speed things up. Okay. <laughs> like, don't. Don't be in a hurry. The change will happen. It's very hard to see week to week, even 10 pounds down. 20, after like 20 pounds, if you take a, a an absolutely same photo. So in other words, like you're wearing the exact same clothes, you're standing in exactly the same light, same pose, same everything. And, and, and you suck in your stomach the same amount, which is really hard to do. But if you, if you do all that and you keep everything consistent after 20 pounds, you'll probably be able to tell without, without looking at, you know, the, the weights on either one, which one is the before and which one is the after. But up until that point, it's difficult. And um, and it's very hard to know just by looking. It just is for a while. And it really depends on how much you have to lose. And um, uh, just from my own recollection, because I started up at 222, um, that, that as, far, as far as I know, that's as high as my weight got. I think it probably was higher than that, but um, that was when I actually got on the scale. Um, I remember being down at 200, right around 200, I hovered at 200 for forever. Um, kind of thinking, I don't really, I don't really see it, you know, like not really, I, I couldn't really tell a difference. People around me couldn't tell. And that was, uh, really tough uh, at first to be like, wow, nobody, <laughs> I've lost 20 pounds here and nobody's really saying anything. But then this crazy thing happens the more weight you lose, it's like, then as you get thinner, then the weight starts to be noticeable. Like the, the even smaller increments start to be more noticeable. It's unfair. It is so unfair. It's like the hardest thing about weight loss is that you really can't see much difference um, in the beginning when it's the hardest, when you need the most encouragement, that's when you're not going to get it from other people, unless you specifically say, congratulate me because I've lost this amount of weight. Um, but it will eventually happen. You will eventually see the results. Um, you know, when I look at my before and after now, it's like, well, you know, that you can see, but it's just that week to week to week progression uh, is really difficult. I, I, I took a, a progress photo uh, every week from uh, 2014 when I, when I got tagged in the Facebook photos, I started taking a, a progress photo. And for the longest time, when you're, when you're wa watching it, like if you're just looking in that spreadsheet, um, it's like you can't tell a difference a until I started to get down. I want to say in the like 180s. So at that point, it was like 40 pounds. Then it's like, OK, yeah, yeah, this this is like you can really start to see more, you know, uh, of a difference. And it's just unfair. And I'm, I'm uh, you know, but don't speed it up. Don't try to speed it up. <laughs> that That is the thing, because when you when you get in a hurry you do the unsustainable, the thing that's like, oh, I can, I can white knuckle it for a while. And then, you know, you have a plateau and then it just like so many people, they just like go completely off course. I stayed just consistent with my simple, easy plan. And that was the thing that got me to where I wanted to be and then helped me to maintain it, you know, since then. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, Christina Buseri. Hopefully I pronounced it right. Uh, so what did, oh, what made you want to start running again? Such a good question. A um, couple of things. One, uh, the, the big kicker for me was um, my husband and I were uh, uh, recording this uh, campground loop 
video, like it's something we do for our other channel. And um, he had, like, I had to go check on the kids or something uh, in the RV and he was walking on past Luke. So when I left the camper, I needed to kind of run to catch up with him. And when I was running to catch up with him, I was like, this feels amazing because one, I was not getting out of breath and I just felt lighter, like, because previously when I was running, I was, you know, 80 pounds heavier. And uh, that feeling just felt really good. And it's something I've been toying with in my mind probably for the past year or so. I think, I think really when, um, when I interviewed Jim Caldwell uh, of Feeding Obesity, he, he runs. I think that's right. He runs. And I remember thinking, it, it just like, I kind of thought, oh, maybe I should start running. But I didn't. I really wanted to see. For, for my own purposes, like, can I lose this weight? Can I get down to my goal weight just by walking? I, and, and can I maintain it just by walking? And I've, I've proven that to myself very thoroughly at this point. So I was like, okay, let's see what running's like. So I, I just, I, I thought, you know, if I hate it, I'll stop. But if I like it, I'll, I'll go with it for a while. And, and so my, my own deal with myself is either I, um, will run the 6.25 miles or I'll walk six miles, either one, you know, and uh, that's just my deal with myself. But so far I've just been running every day. Um, and I uh, like, so when I was running, I, I was uh, finding a couple of things uh, that feeling of accomplishment. I still do feel a sense of accomplishment when I have walked six miles. I still do feel that. But when I've run a 10 K it's like, that feels good. It, it, it's like, it's more like what I felt when I first started walking six miles consistently. And, uh, and, you know, I do think it's good to occasionally mix it up. Like if, uh, I, I had started to kind of feel like, uh, like kind of like rote, you know, it was like, eh, well, okay, I did that. And, uh, I thought, you know, I just want to see what it's like. So I really enjoyed it. I love getting like a good, you know, sweat worked up. So, um, uh, so I've really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that's what made me want to start running again. Uh, words fall, uh, said how much weight, uh, can you lose in a month doing intermittent fasting? Uh, I'm afraid I'm eating too much. I started intermittent fasting May 1st and by May 3rd, I weighed, uh, 152 and by May 4th, 249 and by, by May 8th, 248. Okay. Uh, okay. Afraid you're eating too much, but you've lost Let's see. You've lost four pounds, right? Am I, I, I think I'm reading that right. You've lost four pounds in a month. That's great. I mean, like a pound, a pound a week, right? That's what, I mean, you're doing a great job is my point. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be. Four pounds a week. Started May 1st. Oh, oh, oh yeah. This, yeah. I was looking at it as May 28th. I don't know why. Oh, so yeah. So you've lost four pounds in a week. So that's okay. So you're afraid you're eating too much. I, maybe you meant losing too much because that, that is, I mean, so, okay. First of all, the first week you do anything, sometimes people like will, will kind of have this like bigger drop than normal. Um, you're at 252. So I would say a few pounds a week, you know, like if you continue to lose at like, you know, two pounds or so a week, that would be, you know, nothing to worry about in my, in my book, like one to two pounds a week. Uh, in, in, as far as all the research I've done says, that's a great thing to shoot for. Um, really, once you get below 200, I would say a pound a week is a good thing to shoot for until you get near the normal BMI, in which case it's like a, a fraction of a pound. But, um, but sometimes what can happen is just like water weight that first week. So don't get frustrated if next week it's slower. Um, or if it's just like, you know, your body's like, whoa, what's going on? It kind of freezes. I would say, again, weigh every day, keep track of your seven day average, see how it moves over time. Uh, but that's fantastic. I, I mean, like four pounds, four pounds in a week. That, that's great. Most people, though, as far as just how much weight uh, that, you know, a, a pound a week or two, maybe if you're a fast loser. Uh Question two, how many snacks should you have? I've always been a snacky person. Uh, my eating window is 12 to 8, and uh, at 8, I stopped eating. Now, I never had a hard and fast rule about number of snacks. What I was trying to accomplish 
uh, with, with the snacking or not was I wanted to be really careful that I wasn't emotionally eating because what I started to notice about myself was that there were times in my fasting window where I would start to feel really hungry. And it was because as you know, like when I started to notice, it was like, Oh, I'm just really stressed out right now. Or, Oh, I'm feeling tired right now. I'm not really hungry. It's more tired or stressed. Um, so then as time went on, I started to recognize that in the eating window, sometimes to be like, Oh, well, I want a snack, but really I'm stressed out about this thing. So I just started to say, okay, I got to handle this thing that I'm stressed about and not go eat the food right now. Um, but I mean, right now you're doing fantastic. Though. So um, I would say just on the snacks, make sure you're actually hungry and not emotionally eating. Um, but fantastic. Great job. Congratulations. Um, Lindsay Levita says, do you think you could still fast all day without coffee. I'm not a caffeine drinker. I just feel sensitive. And I wonder if OMAD is still possible without coffee or caffeine. Do you exercise daily too? So yeah, um, plenty of people do it. I love coffee. So I was like, I don't want to find out. Um, although I think the next time I do a five day fast, I am going to do it without coffee. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think plenty of people do it. I, you, you may find that, you know, you drink water or something like that to kind of get that feeling of fullness that uh, I think coffee does provide for those of us who like coffee. Um, and yes, I exercise. I mean, you know, like I'm, I'm running the 10K every day at this point, but that's only been for the past 10 days. Before that, I would do six miles of walking. And, um, and I've done that fasted, you know, like... Um, uh, on my five day fast. So I was fasting, you know, uh, for five days and I did walk my six miles every day during that. Um, when I did my hundred thousand steps for Jezza that I did that fasted. So I'd eaten supper the night before. And then I, I didn't eat until after I'd finished that, which was for 43.2 miles, I think. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, Julie Lowry said, uh, how long did it take you to get adjusted to doing OMAD? I went really slow. <laughs> so, uh, I, like the actual adjustment, I was already at probably like a 24 window, you know? So, um, so it wasn't that big a leap. Uh, I think within, within a week or so, um, I was adjusted. Um, if, you're trying to jump to OMAD from a regular eating schedule, which I don't like the idea of. I, I think you should try it to just go gradually. So many people I've seen do it. Like they try to go, they just try to jump into it and it seems so weird and it seems so hard that they get a really bad taste in their mouth for what it's actually like if you go to it and, and, and find it gradually. Um, but uh, most people find like 21 days, if they, if they go really hard with it, 21 days, within 21 days, it starts to feel normal. So, uh, but I think it's, everybody is different. Everybody has their own individual tolerances. So I'd say if you try it, if you try to jump to it and it just feels really hard, take a step back. Don't just write it off completely. Just go at it more gradually. Uh, Jesse L said, if you eat noon one day and 6 PM, uh, the next, does it mess up your hunger signals? Is it easier to get used to fasting if you eat at the same time each day? it is easier if you eat at the same time each day, for sure, for me at least. Uh, some people maybe don't have this same kind of sensitivity that I do, but like, man, my body will tell me exactly when I ate the day before and I, and I will feel that hunger. Um, I especially had noticed that on like Mondays, I would feel hungry exactly when I ate on Sunday, you know, for the cheat day. Um, so um, I, just for your own, you know, like making it easy, I would say, just try to stick to the same time every day. But if it's not going to work for you, like your life is too hectic for that, then just, you know, put it wherever you want to. And then you will eventually get used to those hunger signals and just kind of saying, well, I feel hunger right now, but I'm going to eat in a few hours and I'll be fine. Um, so there you go. Uh, Daniel Holmes said, and Hey Daniel, uh, I've been, doing intermittent fasting for just over a year, mainly a 16-8 or an 18-6, and I've lost a, a net of 23 pounds. But for a few weeks now, my weight seems to be stuck in the same five pound range. How do you get past that? So, okay. So first of all, congratulations on losing 23 pounds. That is something to be really excited about. 
what I would say, first of all, a few weeks, this is not the answer you want to hear. I give it like 10 to 12 weeks and, and see if it stays stuck. Because odds are you like what you're doing. Like if you've been doing this for about a year now, you like a 16, 8, 18, 6. Um, I just stick with it. I, I, everybody hits plateaus from time to time. It's kind of like your body says, wait a minute. I don't know what's going on. And it just kind of stays stuck for a while. But if you just keep at it and, and just keep with your plan and don't go like, see what happens a lot of times when people just quit. They're like, ah, forget it. It's not going to move. But just stay with your plan and see if maybe the scale starts to move. Um, I was trying to think of who the interview was. Uh, it was just a recent interview and I don't know if it's gone live yet. Uh, the name is leaving me. I'm really bad with names. <laughs> oh, man, it's just totally left me right now. But anyway, uh, he was talking about being plateaued for about 12 weeks at one point. Um, so the point is, uh, wait it out. Uh, if, if, if after, a, you know, I would say, you know, 10 weeks, but if, if you, if you want to just go with six weeks, then I would say, okay, six weeks. Um, that was Kyle Cook and his video goes live on Friday. Kyle Cook. That's right. His, his video goes live on Friday and, uh, and he talks about the plateaus that, uh, that he hit. But, um, the point is, uh, I, I like to be really slow to change things, as you can see with like the whole running thing it took me a while. Um, and there were times, you know, during, during, even when I was doing OMAD where the scale would kind of get stuck for a while and I would think, oh, should I change something? Like, should I, should I do keto or whatever? And I always told myself, no, because that's not what I'm going to want to sustain for the rest of my life. I want to, I want to figure this out eating what I like to eat and, 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 and doing it that way. Um, so just don't be in a rush. I, I know that's so hard, but, um, I would, I would just say stick with it uh, and, and just, uh, you know, and you can kind of look at it as like, Hey, you're maintaining right now, which is fantastic. Um, uh, if you find that you still are stuck and it's been 10, 12 weeks and you're, you're being really consistent, you know, there's, there's a couple of levers you can pull, right? You could either, uh, make your fasting window a little bit longer. You could, uh, analyze kind of like how you're eating in the window. Like, are you snacking? And if you are maybe no snacks, just say, okay, I'm just going to do big meals, whatever I want at the meal, but no snacking in the middle. Um, and, and just kind of experiment with it. Or, you know, you could, uh, uh, some, some people like to do an extended fast, but here, here's my word of caution on that. That can cause a drop in water weight and then an immediate fluctuation back up once you start eating it, you know, again, and then that can be really frustrating. So, uh, you know, uh, that's what I would say. So hopefully that helps Daniel. Words fall said, how do you make goals? Ooh, good question. Um, weight loss goals, I think are a little bit different than uh than traditional kind of goals because of the timeline i have yet to figure out a way to know exactly how much i was going to lose at any given point i never knew I, I mean i would be consistent with what i was doing consistent with what i was eating but it, again there's like all these other factors there's hormonal things there's stress going on in your life there's water weight that comes and goes and and, and it's just you just don't know and even when you get into it, I mean, I remember when I, uh, so like when I decided, okay, I want to get into the normal BMI, uh, after I started this YouTube channel, uh, I was like, I, I don't even know what a good goal is to, to set, like, because now I'm near the normal BMI, like, is my weight loss going to be slower? Is it going to be a pound a week or not? So I just kind of in my mind said, I'm going to guess that maybe I can lose a half a pound a week. As it turns out, it was more like a third of a pound a week. So, uh, but the thing that I just kept in my head was, I want to see if I can get down to this certain way that, you know, like 142, I wanted to see if I could get down there just by doing my, my original plan, which was OMAD six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, walk six miles every day, eat whatever you want uh, at the meal. Um, and so that, you know, I did end up getting to my goal. It just took 
longer than really what I even could kind of guess. Um, and I think that's the best way to take any weight loss goal is to say, you know, if I can figure out how to lose about a pound a week, then, then it'll take me this long. If it, if it goes and it ends up being like a half a pound a week, here's how long it's going to take me. If it's less than that, here's how long it's going to take me. And even if it's going to take you years, right, to, to get it off, the, the way I looked at it in my own mind when I had the best results was even if it takes me years to get this off, you know, like at, at the time, uh, like I was uh, 32, right? I think I was 32. I said, okay, if it takes me five years to figure this weight loss thing out, I'll still be in my thirties, you know, and, and I, that's, I've still got a lot of life left to live probably. So I'm okay with that. Uh, it's more about, it was more about for me figuring out that sustainable thing that I could stick with for the rest of my life and, and, and solve this permanently as opposed to, well, here's what I can try to like white knuckle it and get off. Um, uh, I would say also on, on the goals, make it a range. Don't try to make it one single number because weight fluctuates. And depending on how much your weight fluctuates, you may want to have like a 10 pound range, or you may want to have a five pound range. Uh, I try to do a, a five pound range of my seven day average, but I don't always hit that. Um, but it's about, you know, just figuring out what works for you, I think is uh, the important thing. Uh, and not getting in a hurry, like write down what your goal is, have a reason for it, like be able to tell somebody why, be, or at least be able to tell yourself why, and go as deep as you possibly can with that. Like, what are all the things uh, that are impossible right now because of where your weight is? You know, what is it keeping you from doing? And go as deep and as wide with that as you can, uh, and that will help you to keep going towards your goal. Um, and then track your progress too, um, along the way. Okay. Hopefully that helped. Sarah C said, if lunch break time varies each day, should the close of my window also vary? Um, so I never did it that way. I always just said, here are the hours I eat. Cause I hate doing calculations. Um, but you know, you can do that. Like if you don't mind it and, and you like, that's what you prefer. That's what makes it feel easier for you. Like, uh, I had a late lunch today. So, you know, like, or, or early lunch, however that is, so that, you know, the next day is not going to be too challenging. I would say do it the way that makes it feel the easiest for you. Um, don't, don't worry too much about the details, though. Just, like, see what works. Farrah Swan. Hey, Farrah. Uh, should I feel bad that I may lose less weight in the second year of fasting than the first? I lost 54 the previous year. So far, only seven, and I'm working twice as hard this time. First of all, congratulations, Farah, 54 uh, last year and seven, already seven this year. Already seven is how I would say that. Not only seven. Uh, that's 61 pounds down. That is fantastic. You are doing a good job. You're working twice as hard. So are you exercising? Like maybe you're building some muscle there. That's another thing to consider. Like it may be that you, your body is, your, your uh, body composition is changing uh, too. Not everything is always, always, always reflected in the scale. Um, but do not feel bad. You're doing fantastic. And especially as your weight comes down, it slows down. Like as you get towards the normal BMI, even, even like when you're in the, a little bit overweight BMI, it, it could still be a little bit slow. Um, and I, I can't remember, uh, and, uh, and you don't have to say like where you're at, but, um, just know that. And, and, um, and sometimes your body just says, Hey, you know, I want to kind of chill out here and just work with your body, not against it. And, and don't be in a hurry. You're doing fantastic. Um, uh, just keep, keep at it. Keep, keep focusing on why you're doing this. Like what, what are the things that you're realizing? Like how, how is your life improving as the weight is coming off? Like what are the positive changes? Focus on those non-scale victories too. Uh, that can always help. So, um, and, and, you know, like if it, you're working twice as hard, I think that does mean working out, like you're getting stronger probably, right? You're, you know, maybe making some, uh, personal best on some different activities. So that's really good. Um, words fall said, is it bad that I obsess over the number? Because that's where I can see if I lost weight because I can't see it. All right. This is a tough thing to do to stop obsessing over the scale. I think the scale is a wonderful tool horrible master though. So you cannot let it control your day. You cannot let it control your thoughts and your emotions. You have to like divorce your emotions from the scale. 
And what helped me was to think of myself as a scientist and, and to kind of like try to observe myself uh, in the third person, if that makes sense. Like, so I would just say, okay, please get on the scale. And so I would get on the scale. Okay, the, the subject weighs X amount today. And I just put that number into my Fitbit app. And learning how to just observe that number and say, okay, that's one data point. I've got one data point and tomorrow I'll have a new data point. Um, and and I'm, I'm not going to focus on the daily numbers. I am going to look at the trend over time, okay? Like I'm going to say, you know, over six, and eight, or six to eight weeks of time, how is my average trending? Um, is it going in the right direction or not? Um, it's, it's difficult to do, but you can do it, uh, word salt. You can get to that point where you're not obsessing. Um, I, and I do, I do understand what you're saying though. It's like, you, you can't see it. So it's like the number on the scale is the thing that's like, well, the number on the scale is telling me that I'm losing. But again, I would say, think of it as a tool. The scale is a tool and that's all it is. It will show you how many pounds you weigh that day. Um, if you're going to obsess over something, I would start obsessing over all the positive changes you're seeing. Like, you have more energy maybe, or like that thing that used to be difficult, isn't difficult anymore. Like I remember once I started realizing like, Oh, walking across the parking lot feels like nothing now. Whereas it used to feel like this major chore and, um, you know, just being able to sit in, uh, you know, my car comfortably and, and not have to like, feel like, Oh, I can't get my hand down in between the thing. Cause my thighs are, spilling over uh, the, the side of the seat, that kind of thing. Uh, all those little things, the scale doesn't tell you that, but but your daily life will, will show you those things. Um, and so, uh, but you know, it's, it's a process though. Like you just have to work on it every day, like work on the whole, uh, not letting it mess with your emotions and, and choosing your emotions uh, and just trying to be curious instead of uh, upset. Like if you notice the scale goes up, just be curious. Like, hmm, what did I eat last night? Did I eat really salty food or, or did I eat, you know, what? And, and a good thing about that is if you become curious, you can usually find the answer. Like, oh yeah, I had Mexican food. Well, the next time I have Mexican, I'm going to expect the scale to go up and it won't be so like, oh, you know what happened? I know what happened. Salty Mexican food makes my water weight go up and it'll be off in a couple of days. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, Hill, uh, Hill Dare 2 said, where do you walk outside or in a treadmill? Uh, or uh, So I walk outside. Now I run outside. But in the beginning, from like 2016 through 20, what, <laughs> 2018, uh, I was walking inside my house, inside my house all the time because it excuse proof my workout. I knew I never have an excuse to not get my steps in. Uh, and I just walked, walked around my bedroom, walked around my living room, uh, walked around my, just in my house. Uh, occasionally I'd walk outside, but I knew uh, I always had that standby. I can always get them in inside. It's never too late. The weather's always fine. Uh, I will, if the weather's bad, I'll walk inside this RV too. I'll pace back and forth or I'll walk in place. Um, or I'll run uh, out in the rain <laughs> if need be. So, uh, uh, so basically, where there's a will, there's a way. And I was not in huge houses, just to let you know. Like uh, the houses were like 1,200 square feet on up to like 1,900 square feet. I think was the thing. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, so uh, we're a little bit past time, but thank you guys for joining me uh, this week. Uh, that was uh, awesome. Uh, thank you for all the good questions. I hope it was helpful and I will see you guys next week.